In this video, we're going to show you how to tie a high-low rig for sheep's head fishing. Now, this is a very popular rig for surf fishing, but it can be very effective for sheep's head because as you can see here, this is a finished rig and you have two hooks on your main line. You can see you have one up high and you have one down low or vice versa. And then at the bottom, you have your weight. Now the benefit of this rig is that obviously you have two hooks so you can use two baits at once which can definitely help you increase your odds of catching fish. But what I also like about this rig is that you can put two different baits on so you can see uh, what the fish are more attracted to. It, you can have a fiddler crab on one, you can have a sand flea on the other one and just see which one those fish are more drawn to so you can dial in on what they're feeding on. Now the biggest downfall about this rig is it can take a, quite a bit of time to tie, uh, especially if you're new to it. And also if you get broken off, you'll have to retie your rig. But that's one other benefit about having two hooks is if one gets broken off, you still have one left. So that's definitely a good advantage of this rig. So let's go ahead and show you how to tie this rig up. So you're gonna want to have obviously your leader material I like to use 30 pound uh, mono. I like to get a big spool of it. Again, because if you have to retie a lot of rigs, you also use quite a bit of line uh, when tying up these rigs. So having a big spool is an advantage because it just goes a long way. Then you're going to want a bank sinker. Anything from one ounce up to three, maybe even four ounces is really gonna depend on the depth that you're fishing and also how strong the current is. So make sure you have quite an assortment of different size weights. Then you're gonna need two hooks. I like to use a number one live bait hook. These are made by uh, Gamagatsu here. These are number one live bait hooks. Pretty much any brand, you can get these hooks up to you. We're not uh, sponsored or affiliated or take any sponsorships or endorsements from any of these companies. So we just use what we like to use. So let's go ahead and tie this rig up. First thing I like to do with my leader is stretch it out, get all the loops out of it, uh, get all the coils out of it because that just makes it a lot more easier to work with. So the first thing you're gonna do is give yourself plenty of line, especially if you're new to tying these rigs. You're gonna see your tag end here. Make sure you give yourself enough tag end. I usually put about two feet out there just for uh, safety just so I know I have enough line left over when I'm done tying the rig. So first things first, make a loop. Form a loop with your line like so. After you do that, what you're going to do is tie an overhand knot with your loop. So just fold the loop over. As you can see, I just formed another loop right there and all you're going to do is form overhand loops or overhand knots rather with that loop. And you want to do this about four to five times. Just go in and out four and five to four to five times. And then pull it snug. Now you want to give yourself at least or uh, have this loop be about three to four inches long. You don't want to make it too small. So you can see you have that loop form now. It's a little twisted up, but that's okay. Wouldn't worry about that. Now from there, you're going to take that loop, hold it in one hand, and you're going to cross the tag end over the main line, like so. And now you can see you have that uh, loop right there. And from here, you're actually going to twist the line over itself about five to six times. So you can see, you can kind of see that little gap right there. What you're gonna do is basically just twist that line around itself about five to six times, like so. Now you can see that opening right there that you still have. What you wanna do is take the loop that you just created down here and put it through that opening. This is where you need about three or four hands for this. <laughs> So just get that loop through that opening all the way through, make sure that knot gets through. Now you can see there, you have this right here and you're just going to slowly tighten that down. You don't wanna do it too fast because it'll create a lot of heat and freak, uh, friction and that will weaken your knot. 
Now what you have there is what they call a T knot. It looks like a T and what happens is that almost acts like a three-way swivel. You have your um, line going down, you have your main line, then you have the hook. This is where the hook's gonna go. You have it hanging off that T right there and it helps it keep it off your main line. So it helps keep you uh, from getting tangled up. So you have that one loop there and this is gonna be where one hook goes and all you're gonna do is do that same thing a little further up the line. That's gonna create your higher hook. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now you have two loops there, one for each hook, and then your tag end down here, this is where your weight's gonna go. And all you're gonna do down there is just form a simple loop. So loop that line over and just tie two or three overhand knots with that loop, like so. And that is going to be where you put your weight on. Now, the nice thing about this loop is that you can quickly change weight if you need to. So if you need to go from a one ounce to a two ounce, three ounce, whatever it may be, you can easily switch that out. Because the way you put this weight on, you just pinch the loop, put it through the hole on the eye of the weight, like so. Pull it all the way through, put the weight through the loop, pull it tight, and now you have your weight on there, so your weight's good to go. So now we're gonna go back up to our loops that we formed here, and what you wanna do, I don't like to use these loops to put the hook on. Some people will just pinch these loops and put the hook on the same way that I put that weight on. What I like to do is cut one side. That's a good thing about these knots, is you can cut this loop and just make it one strand of line. So it's not as bulky and uh, doesn't get in the way too much. So all you're gonna do is cut one side of each loop close to the knot, like so. Cut that one, cut the other one. And now you can see you have two lines there coming off of the main line. And then you're just gonna tie your hooks onto that. So on this one, I kinda made these really close together. You really want them to be at least five to six inches apart. These are about three inches apart. Again, it takes a lot of practice to uh, really measure out where to get them. But again, make sure your hook line isn't too long that it's interfering with the other one. So let's go ahead and tie on the hooks really quick. I like to use a trilene knot. And all that is, is you go through the eye of the hook once, then you come back around and go through the eye of the hook a second time like so, you can see you formed a little loop there. And all you're going to do is pinch that tag end with the main uh, line right there. And then you're just going to wrap that line around four or five times. And you can really use any knot you prefer to use. This is just my go-to knot. And once you have that uh, line wrapped around, what you wanna do is take that tag end and go through those two loops that are close to the eye of the hook now. Then we'll go ahead and do the same with the other one. Just attach our hook here. Cut our tag ends off. And there you go got a high low rig now this one again these knots are a little bit too close to each other I would definitely space them out more just so the hooks don't interfere with each other so you have two hooks the weight below this is very effective because of those hooks being uh, basically above the weight so you can feel the bites much better uh, if you've ever fished for sheep's head you know they bite very softly you can barely feel those bites so having those hooks directly to your main line without a weight 
in the way can definitely help. So that will wrap up this video on tying the high-low rig. If you have any questions or comments about this, please feel free to leave them down below. Also, if there is a rig that you prefer to use for sheep's head, definitely let us know down below. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. There's something about the water that'll give you peace All by yourself or with your family Live salt strong in wet lines today